It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. This is IRG's Health Talk. Back to Tom Hutler and Shannon O'Kelly. Our next guest, Dr. Peter Bartline, vascular surgeon at Providence, talking about vein therapies, vein blockages, how to repair those blockages and way to prevent them from happening in the first place. And these are something that are, you know, I think it's kind of tough. You can tell if an arm's broken or things like that, Shannon, that are really visible, but veins, that's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Uh, veins are j- definitely a different ball game and very interesting from a physiological anatomical standpoint. And uh, they can get uh, to be problematic and they can be fixed. So that's the good news. And that's what we're going to find out about. All right. Shannon O'Kelly and Dr. Peter Bartline. Dr. Bartline, welcome to Health Talk. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. Thanks for joining us. I'm excited to talk to you. Vascular surgery. Wow. That seems like a huge universe of uh, when you talk, look at the vascular system of the human body, how complex you have arteries, you have veins. We're going to talk. We're going to drill down in that a little bit. But I do want to find out about, uh, about you and your practice, uh, kind of your interest, your training, how you came to Providence, and what, what, what kind of the day in the life of Dr. Bartline. Let's talk about that. Sure. Don't, don't build up vascular surgery too much. It's glorified plumbing. I was just going to say, I wanted to say that too. Thank you for doing that. But no important, very important plumbing. Go ahead. <laughs> no problem. Um, I did my training in Utah, my general surgery, and then fellowship in Wisconsin. And then uh, came out here for my first job about three years ago now, two and a half, three years ago. Uh, it's a bit of a homecoming because I was born in Seattle, but raised in Alaska. So it's good to be back in the Northwest. Uh, tell our listeners, I mean, uh, don't be so humble here. Um, you know, when you talk about your training, you know, you do four years of medical school, and then you go on to do a residency in general surgery, I would take it. And then you specialize in vascular surgery. I mean, you're right. talking about, you know, you say plumbing, but that plumbing in the body, uh, pretty important plumbing when you talk about arteries and veins and, and what flows in those arteries and how they're, how they're built anatomically, physiologically. It's very complex. How, how, where'd your interest come from? I mean, did you have a family member that was a plumber? No, just kidding. Just, where did, <laughs> <laughs> so where'd it come from? Well, bo- both my parents are nurses, so I was exposed to healthcare at an early age. Um, and then really it was when I was a medical student, I had some rotations in the vascular surgery service and really just loved to see how things work, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, vascular surgery is nice because it's like you mentioned the anatomy. It's, it's very consistent. And uh, you, once you get your hands on it and get to sew tubes to tubes, you really can't stop. So that was kind of what got me hooked. Well, I, I was looking at your bio. I mean, my gosh, I mean, you're doing aortic surgery, you're doing uh, 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 carotid surgery, you're doing surgeries, bypasses, stenting, laser ablation. We've got a lot to talk about um, here. Let's talk about the anatomy of the circulatory system. I mean, maybe describe it to our listeners. You know, we talk about these arteries and veins, their tubes. Those tubes have lumen. They have, uh, they're built uh, with certain structures. They have walls. Uh, they have aneurysms. They have weakness. They have blockages. They have everything. When you talk about uh, the vascular system, uh, let's set that up a little anatomically, how it works. Sure, and why? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, everything starts at the heart and goes out or comes back from there. And uh, arteries are leaving the heart and transporting oxygenated blood throughout the body. Um, we do surgeries uh, for that, like you mentioned, stenting and bypass surgery, stroke risk reduction surgery. We fix aneurysms or dilations of those arteries. Um, and about 80 to 90 percent of our practice is dealing with arterial disease. And then the remaining 10 to 20 percent is over on the vein side. Uh, which I think we're going to spend most of our time talking about today. Yeah, we want to talk about the vein side. I, I want to. I want you to talk about the vein side from a standpoint of maybe pressure gradients, how the body works from pressure, how the you know you talked about the heart. The heart pushes oxygen blood out to the body, but that deoxygenated blood has to return to the body through this venous system. Maybe right. from a, a dynamic, a, a fluids dynamic. Here we go. We're talking fluids. Uh, maybe just but describe that venous system. Yeah, sure. The, so the the arteries benefit from the heart. Uh, you know, uh, propelling the blood through them to the organs that need the oxygen. The veins have the job of bringing that blood back, which is usually a fairly passive, um, passive system. Now, when we're talking about pumping blood all the way down to the feet, we got to have a mechanism to get that back up. And so the body relies on the exercising muscles of the calf and the thighs to compress the veins and that propels the blood upwards. But when those muscles relax, the blood wants to fall back down to the feet. 
And so the system that the body has is a series of one-way valves that prevent that blood from falling all the way down to the feet. And it kind of keeps the blood moving in, a, in an orderly fashion. It's a fairly low pressure uh, system. Um, and so pressure is an important um, factor in terms of uh, vascular disease. Back with our conversation about veins with Dr. Peter Bartline and Shannon O'Kelly coming up next right here on Como. It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. IRG's Health Talk continues. More of our conversation now on veins with Dr. Peter Bartline and Shannon O'Kelly. Dr. Bartline, again, thank you for joining us on Health Talk. We're talking about arteries, and we're also mostly talking about veins. You did an excellent job talking about pressure. You described the veins. By the time the blood returns, it's fighting gravity to get up back to where it needs to go. And you talked about these one-way valves that kind of uh, obviously that's keeping the, the the blood going back up and not retracting back down. Uh, those, those valves are pretty important. And I can imagine sometimes they have pathology or dysfunction. Maybe talk about the valves. Sure. The, the valves we typically treat um, are the ones in the superficial venous system. So right underneath the skin, uh, the greater saphenous vein is kind of the main uh, roadway for blood up underneath the skin, up the leg. And when the valves get faulty there, it can add pressure underneath the skin. And some of the veins underneath the skin that come off of it, like little branches in a stream, start to carry more blood than they're used to. And those become dilated. When they're dilated, they become what are known as varicose veins. Okay. So these are the varicosities that some people see. These are these swollen kind of, it looks like almost like jagged rivers underneath your skin. Sometimes you see little worms underneath the skin. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. They they tend to cause a lot of pain, swelling, aching, burning, itching Uh that, that really becomes unmanageable. And those are the patients that we like to see in the office because we can offer procedures to treat those. Um, the other things that can happen with that increased pressure underneath the skin and the venous system is it can actually get bad enough that folks get wounds down at their ankle that uh, heal. And so we also have treatments to help with that. So there's a drainage problem. Basically, you talked about these, these valves and these valves become dysfunctional. What causes the valve to become dysfunction? And more importantly, as a vascular surgeon, this is fascinating. How do you fix it? Most, the most important risk factors are if you're female, If you're overweight, um, if you spend a lot of time on your feet, and then most importantly, if if there's a strong family history of varicose Mm -hmm. veins, those are the biggest risk factors that we deal with. Um, When the valves become uh, faulty, uh, we don't fix the valves. We actually shut down the vein, the greater saphenous vein, to help direct that blood flow to the deep veins which run underneath the muscle. The analogy or metaphor my patients get used to in the office is I say it's like shutting down Highway 9 and making everybody take I-5. Got it. When you fix that, are you using another vein that you harvest? I mean, how do you? No, I mean, we, we actually just shut it down uh, by one of two means. One is with a with a small laser that's run over a wire. And we, when we turn the laser on and slowly withdraw it, it heat seals the vein from the inside out. Um, that's one way. It's called a laser ablation. And then the other way, we started using a product uh, that's a special glue that, that hardens like an epoxy once it reacts with blood. And we inject it with a small caulking gun, again, kind of over a wire. And it helps uh, distribute this, this glue, essentially, and seals the vein from the inside out. And so those are our two primary methods of shutting down the greater saphenous vein. Wow, Dr. Bartline, I mean, the information you just gave, I'm just always in awe of the advancements, technology, things that are happening in medicine, and, and, and just the options for patients. You do it all. You come back on with me in the future, and we'll have some more conversations regarding vascular surgery, okay? Sure, absolutely. We've been talking about veins of axillary surgeon at Providence, Peter Bartline, talking about blockages, ways to prevent them, and Shannon, uh, some pretty... Uh, it's, it's good to hear that people like Dr. Bartline know about this stuff because to the naked eye and to people like you and I, or at least me, you can't tell if this stuff's going on underneath your skin. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's you're exactly right, Tom. Uh, there are people out there who have significant varicosities and those are where the veins bulge. They can be very painful and they can be fixed. And that's the key. They can be fixed and alleviate those that, that pain and that, that problem that patients experience with varicose veins. All right, Dr. Ryan Hudson's our next guest right after this on Como.